Next Chapter Podcasts. Next Chapter Podcasts presents the play on podcast series, The Winter's Tale. Episode 7, Remember Me. For the best listening experience, be sure to use headphones or earbuds. And remember, it is required you awake your faith. Now, please, undress. The gentleman is half naked already. Undress, and quickly. Unbuckle, unbuckle. I'm unbuckling. Fortunate mistress, let my calling you by that name stick fast. You must conceal yourself into some hiding place. Take your love's hat and pull it o'er your brows. Shadow your face. Uncostume you and, as you can, tamp down your sparkling demeanor so that you may, for I fear eyes are watching, get on board the ship unseen. I see the play is cast, and I must act a part. <laughs> no remedy. That, that's the front. Are you done yet? If I now met my father, he would not call me son. Uh, no, you shall wear no hat. Come, lady, come. Farewell, my friend. Adieu, sir. Oh, Perdita, what have we two forgot? Give me a word with you. All right, my love. What I do next shall be to tell the king of this escape and where the two are bound wherein my hope is I shall instigate him chasing after them, and in his company I shall review Cecilia, the sight for which I have a heartfelt longing. <laughs> Fortune speed us. We now set off, Camillo, for the seaside. The swifter speed, the better. I understand this business full well. To have an open ear, a quick eye, and a nimble hand is necessary for pickpocket. A good nose is required also to sniff out work for the other senses. I see this is the era of the unjust man. What an encounter this has been, even without the windfall. What windfall flows from this encounter? Surely the gods this year are spoiling me, so that I may act as I please without hesitation. The prince himself is up to some bit of trickery, stealing away from his father with his clog at his heels. If I thought it would gain me something to alert the king to it, I would still not do it. I think it's a more profitable treason to conceal it, and thereby I am loyal to my profession. (gasps) Here's more fuel for a hot brain. I'll observe them from a distance. Every crossroad, every shop, church, courthouse, hanging, yields a careful thief his dinner. Look, look, you're in a pickle barrel. There's no other way but to tell the king she's a changeling and not of your flesh and blood. No, but listen. No, but you listen. Go on in. If she is not of your flesh and blood, then your flesh and blood has not offended the king, and so your flesh and blood is not to be punished by him. Uh Uh-huh. Show those things you found along with her, those secret things. That being done, let the law go whistle, I say. I will tell the king the whole story, every bit of it, yes, and all about his son's pranks, too, who I may say was no honest man, neither to his father nor to me, when he set out to make me the king's brother-in-law. Indeed. Brother-in-law is the farthest off you would have been to him. And then your blood would have been worth... Heaven only knows how much more per ounce. Ooh, wise puppies, these two. Well, let's go to the king. There is plenty in this bundle to make him scratch his beard. (laughs) I wonder what impediment this news might bring to the escape of the prince, my former master. I pray he's at the palace. Though I am not naturally loyal, I sometimes am by accident. Let me pocket up my peddler's excrement and don another guise. Greetings! Rustics, where art thou off to? To uh, the palace, if it please your worship. Thou hast business there? What? With whom? What's Uh, in that bundle? Where uh, doth thou reside? What mm. are thy names, ages, thine occupations, lineages, and anything else of a personal nature? Disclose immediately. We are only plain fellows, sir. Uh Uh-huh. A lie. Thou art rough 
and Harry. Oh. Offer me no lies. It suits no one but barkeeps, who often give their customers a lie by shorting us a quarter pint at a time, but we pay for it with honest money instead of punches to the jaw. Therefore, they do not give us a lie. They sell it to us. I would have thought you were lying, if not for your fancy words. If it please, are you a courtier, sir? Whether it pleases me or not, I am a courtier. Oh. See thou not the fashion of the court and the satire? Doth not my stance reflect the posture of the court? Doth not thy nose smell court odour on me? Doth I not ooze court contempt upon thy baseness? Ooh. Thinkest thou that because I attempt to extract from thee thy business, that I am therefore no courtier? I am a courtier head to toe, and one that may choose to either push on or pluck back thy business there. And so I command thee to release the cat from its sack. My business, sir, is with the king. What advocate hast thou to speak on thy behalf? I don't know, sir. Advocate is the court word for bribe. A present. A what? A present. A say you have none. Sir, I have no pheasant, cock, nor hen. How blessed art we that art not simple men. Yet nature could have made me as they are, and therefore I'll not disdain them. This must surely be a great courtier. Well, his garments are lavish, but he wears them strangely. Well, that makes him more noble, because he is eccentric. Oh. A high-born man, I'll bet you. Ooh. I know from the way he picks his teeth. That bundle there. What's in that bundle? What's in that box? Well, sir, this bundle and box contain secrets that no one must know but the king, and he shall know them within the hour if I may get to speak with him. Old man, thou hast wasted thy time. Why, sir? The king is not at the palace. Oh! Mm, he has gone aboard a new ship to purge melancholy and take fresh air. <laughs> For if thou art able to understand serious matters, thou must know the king is full of grief. Oh, so I've heard, sir, about his son, who almost married a shepherd's daughter. If that old shepherd's not in custody already, he should skip out now. Huh? Oh, the curses that are aimed at him, the tortures he'll be put to would break the back of a man or the heart of a monster. Well, I... You think so, sir? Not only him shall suffer what torments they can devise, but also his relations, removed up to fifty times, shall all wear the hangman's noose. Oh. And though tis a pity, tis necessary for an old sheep-whistling rogue, a ram-tender, to allow his daughter to marry into royalty? Well, I mean... Some say he shall be stoned, but that death is too soft for him, I say. Well, what? For dragging our throne into the barnyard. Uh, Several deaths are too few, and the cruelest too kind. Uh, have you heard if the old shepherd has a son or not, by the by, sir? He has a son who shall be flayed alive, <gasps> then poured over with honey and tied to the top of a wasp's nest uh. to stand until he's three quarters dead, uh. then revived again with distilled spirits or some other hot infusion. <laughs> then, raw as he is, and on the hottest day the almanac predicts, shall be leaned against a brick wall uh. with the sun's searing southern eye upon uh. him, watching him be picked apart by squirrels. Uh. Squirrels? We are breath on these traitorly rascals whose miseries are to be chuckled at when their offences are so heinous. Oh. <laughs> tell me, for thou seemest to be honest, plain men, what thou hast to tell the king. If thou wilt show me the respect I deserve, I'll bring thee to his ship, escort thee to his presence, and whisper to him on thine behalf. Oh. If there lives a man besides the king who can affect thine outcome, here is to the man for the task. 
He seems to be of great authority. Mm-hmm. Offer him a present. present. Give him gold. For though authority is a stubborn bear, he is often led by the nose with gold. Oh. Touch the inside of your purse to the outside of his hand and hurry up. Remember, stoned mm-hmm. and flayed alive. Oh, yes. And squirrels. Oh, yeah, squirrels. If it please you, sir, to undertake this business for us, here is all the money I carry with me. Well, I'll double that and leave my son in pawn with you. Dad? Until I can fetch it. After I have done what I promised? Yes, sir. Well, give me the offering. Ooh. And you? Ah. Hast thou a case in this business? Uh. Sorta, sir. But though my casing is pitiful, I hope I won't be flayed out of it. <laughs> That's the case of the shepherd's son. Let him hang. He'll be made an example of. Uh, uh, steady now, steady. We must go to the king and show him these things so he will know she's not your daughter nor my sister. Otherwise, we're dead. Oh, heaven. Uh, sir... Mm. I will match what this old man gives you when this business is performed and remain, as he says, uh, your pawn till you receive it. I will trust thee. Walk ahead toward the seashore. Go on the right side. I'll be along in a moment as soon as I've watered the flowers. We are blessed to know this man. Solemnly blessed. Mm -hmm. Let's go ahead as he tells us. He's here to do us good. (laughs) Even if I wanted to be honest, I see the gods would not allow it. They drop booty in my mouth. (laughs) I am gifted now with two ripe opportunities. One's for gold, the other's a chance to do the prince, my former master, good. And who knows how that might return to benefit me. I will bring these two moles, these blind ones, aboard the ship. If the prince throws them back on shore, then let him call me rogue for being meddlesome, because I made it to that title and whatever shame comes with it. I will present them to him. It may be of consequence. Hey, Play On Podcast listeners, I want you to be a part of the cast. Become a supporting cast member with Play On Podcasts for just $5 a month. Get in-depth interviews featuring some of the most brilliant artists working today. I talk to actors, playwrights, directors, and producers from the worlds of theater and Hollywood, pulling back the curtain on why they got into their profession, why these stories are so relevant today and providing context on the process of making these plays in the podcast format. You'll enjoy ad-free episodes of the Play On podcast series, and maybe even a gift or two. Head over to playonpodcasts.com, click Supporting Cast, and join the club today. We so love creating this content for you, And we hope you'll support us so we can bring you inside this rejuvenated, reimagined Shakespearean world. Join the cast. Supporting cast. Go to ncpodcasts.com. King, you've done enough, and have performed a saint-like sorrow. No fault could you make which you have not redeemed. Indeed, you've paid more penitence than you have sinned. At last, do as the gods have done. Forgive your sins, and with them forgive yourself. Kind Cleomenes, when I remember her and her virtues, <laughs> I cannot forget the harm I did to her. Take the boy hands. No! Away with her. 
to prison. And then recall the harm I did myself. The prince, your son, is dead. Which was so much that it has left my kingdom airless and destroyed the sweetest companion that air man bred his hopes out of. And Faith Leontes, I love you. True, too true, my lord. If one by one you wedded all the world, or from each one alive took something good to make a perfect woman, she you killed would be unparalleled. I agree. Killed. She I killed. <laughs> oh, I did so. But you strike me sorely to say I did. It is as bitter upon your tongue as in my mind. You had a bastard by Polixenes, and I but dreamed it? Please, I beg, say so less often. And you will feel our justice, the most merciful form of which will be to die. It's not right, good lady. You could have spoken a thousand words that would have done the time more benefit and showed your mercy better. You are one of those who'd have him wed again. If you would not, you pity not the state nor the memory of his most sovereign name, and care too little what dangers, from his highness lack of an heir, may drop upon his kingdom and devour its population. What could be more sacred than to be glad the former queen sleeps well? What could be more blessed for posterity, for present morale and the future's sake, to bless the bed of majesty again with a sweet partner to it? There's no one worthy, Dion, compared to her that's gone. No. Besides, the gods must have their secret purposes fulfilled, for has not the divine Apollo said, was not the dictate of his oracle that King Leontes shall not have an heir till his lost child is found? A notion as preposterous to our reason as the thought that my Antigonus, who I'm convinced died with the babe, would rise from his cold grave and come again to me. It's your advice the king should to Apollo be opposed and move against his will. My liege, do not regard them. The crown will find an heir. Great Alexander left his to the worthiest, so his successor was likely to be best. Good Paulina, who holds the memory of Hermione, I know, in honor. Good queen, I, I say good queen, and I would fight to prove she's good were I a man the least among you. Oh, if I had only listened to your counsel. Tend to your babe, she's yours. Then, even now, I might have gazed upon my queen's bright eyes and taken treasure from her lips. And left them more rich from what they yielded. You speak truth. You're liars all. No more such wives. Therefore, no wife, one worse and better loved, would cause Hermione's spirit to repossess her corpse and to appear upon this stage at the hour of the wedding and wail why did you this? Had she such power, she'd had just cause. She had, and she'd incite me to murder my new bride. I'd do the same. Were I a ghost that walked, I'd tell you, look at your bride's eyes and say for what dull part in them you chose her. Then I'd shriek so loud your ears would split their eardrums and the next word spoke would be, remember me. Oh, enough, good lady. <laughs> stars, bright stars, and all other eyes, dead coals. The greatest treasure of my life, your favor, I count it lost, for I can feel it gone. Fear not, Paulina, I'll have no other wife. Oh, my lord. Will you promise never to marry without my blessing? Never, Paulina, I do swear to this. Then, my good lords, bear witness to his oath. You pressure him unduly. Unless another, as like Hermione as is her portrait, should meet his good eye. Good madam. I am done. But if my lord will marry, if you must serve, it happens that you must, give me the task of choosing you a queen. She might not be as young as was your last one, but... She shall be such that the ghost of your first queen would smile for joy to see her in your arms. <laughs> My true Paulina, we will not marry till you tell us. 
That will be when you're first queens again in breath. Never till then. Oh, my lady. Oh, my lord. I. One that presents himself Prince Florizel, son of Polixenes, with his princess, who's the fairest I have yet beheld, desires access to your high presence. Who joins him? He's arrived without his father's pomp. His arrival, being unannounced and sudden, indicates it's not a visitation planned, but forced by need or accident. Servants? A few, and not well dressed. His princess with him, you say? Yes, the most peerless piece of earth, I think, that e'er the sun shone bright on. Oh, Hermione, as every present time will boast itself above a better one gone, so must your grave give way to what's seen now. Sir, you yourself have said, and writ, that our queen had not been, nor was heir to be equaled. Thus your words spoke of her beauty once. It's shrewdly ebbed to claim you've seen one better. Pardon, madam. The one I have almost forgot. Your pardon. The other, when she has captured your eye, will have your tongue, too. This is a creature, if she had formed a new church, might break the faith of other one's disciples and make converts of any she'd bid follow. <laughs> Not women. Women love her because she's a woman worth more than any man. Men, that she is the rarest of all women. Go, Cleomenes. Yourself, accompanied by your honored friends, bring them toward our embraces. Still, tis strange she has arrived in this way. Had our prince, jewel of children, lived this hour, he had paired well with this prince. There was not a full month between their births. Pray you no more. You know he dies again to me when spoke of. And when I shall see this gentleman, your comments will cause me to remember that which might unfurnish me of reason. I do they are here. Your Highness. Your Highness? Play On podcast series, The Winter's Tale, was translated into modern English verse and directed by Tracy Young. The cast is as follows. Elijah Alexander as Leontes. Kayla Carter as Perdita and Amelia. Gina Daniels as Hermione, Mopsa, Shepherd Servant, and Paulina Stewart. Rodney Gardiner as Polixenes. Elijah Goodfriend as Mamilius. Ian Gould as Clown, Lord, and Gentleman. Christopher Jean as Antigonus, Old Shepherd, Servant, Lord, and Rogero. Jim Lickscheidel as Autolycus, Jailer, Cleomenes, Officer, and Lord. Christopher Livingston as Florizel and Servant. KT Vogt as Paulina and Dorcas. Lisa Volpe as Camillo, Dion, Older Lady-in-Waiting, and Gentleman, featuring Estelle Parsons as Time. Casting by the Telsey Office, Karen Castle, CSA, and Ada Karamanian. Voice and text coach, Julie Foe. Episode scripts were adapted and produced by Katherine Eaton. Original music composition, sound design, and mix by Lindsay Jones. Music direction by Andrew Fox. Sound engineering by Sadaharo Yagi and Kabi Kabakov. Mix engineer and dialogue editor, Larry Walsh and Robert McNabb. Podcast mastering by Greg Cortez at New Monkey Studio. Coordinating producer, Transcend Streaming, Kira Bowie and Liana Keys. Managing producer, Robert Capadona. Executive producer, Michael Goodfriend. The Managing Director of Business Operations and Partnerships at Next Chapter Podcasts is Sally Cade Holmes. The Play On Podcast Series, The Winter's Tale, is produced by Next Chapter Podcasts and is made possible by the generous support of the HITS Foundation. Visit ncpodcasts.com for more about the Play On Podcast Series. 
Visit playonshakespeare.org for more about Play on Shakespeare. Hear more about the Play on Shakespeare podcast series by subscribing to Play on Premium at ncpodcasts.com, where you'll find interviews with the artist, producers, and engineers who brought it all to life. And remember, it is required you do awake your faith. Next Chapter Podcasts.